Hello, hi, and welcome to this video. This video, I'm going to be discussing The Secrets of Hartwood Hall by Katie Lumsden. Um, and in this video, I'm not going to do any spoilers because you just need to read it. Um, so this is my thoughts on reading The Secrets of Hartwood Hall. And basically one word, addictive. It is completely addictive. If you love Victorian literature, you're, you're going to love this. There's so many little nods to Victorian literature. I like, if you didn't follow Katie on booktube who is the creator behind the channel books and things you would know instantly without even knowing her channel that this author is a fan of Victorian literature there's so many references uh, we have references to Jane Eyre to Tennant of Wildfell Hall uh, to Agnes Grey as well you can tell there's a lot of love there for the Brontes as well as Dickens as well we've got the old curiosity shop as well as Dombey and Son being mentioned so to sum up the Secrets of Hartwood Hall. It is like Jane Eyre mixed with a bit of Tennant of Wildfell Hall with a sort of dusting almost of the old nurse's towel uh, with Elizabeth uh, by Elizabeth Gaskell um, and also a little pinch of The Exorcist and now if Katie ever watches this video she's gonna be like what the hell uh, <laughs> let me explain myself so there's one it's literally just one scene um, one of the maids Susan is very ill and she's kind of talking in tongues and then also all of a sudden just like bolt upright sits up in bed and then starts like sh shouting out something and it just it just gave me a flashback to the exorcist so i'm sorry about that probably no one else will feel like that when they read that particular scene but that's what i felt like so the secrets of hartwood hall revolves around the main female protagonist margaret lennox she is a widow recently widowed very recently widowed and she's been left with nothing um, by her husband and that's explained throughout the story why that is it wasn't a necessarily happy marriage at all um, not necessarily abuse well actually to be fair not physically abusive but there was some coercive control so I mean that is abusive um, anyway it turns out she was left with nothing so she needs to support herself um, she was a governess before but when she was married she wasn't allowed to do any work so she's got this blip in her cv if you like so it's a, a bit more difficult to find a job but she secures this place at hartwood hall and she instantly begins to feel that there's some sort of mystery you get this you know like you get in some tales this mysterious house with a part of the house which is completely closed off and in this uh, novel it's the east wing of hartwood hall and we get told at the beginning well Margaret gets told that it's because it's dilapidated it's dangerous you shouldn't go in there you know you might injure yourself and we soon find out when Margaret just can't hide her curiosity any longer and she goes for a little wonder and realizes that actually no it's not dilapidated so what's the secret and then we get as I say we get a hint of gothic a hint of the ghost story when you know Margaret starts believing she's seeing things or she's hearing things and she's seeing shadows um, outside and that's starting to play with her emotions and that's where we get a slight tint of the ghost story um, Not nothing like major we're not going into Le Fanu here with the the gothic but it's nice touch as well um, there's also a nice little LGBT sort of hint as well um, at the end of the story which I appreciate as well so Margaret is a governess to her young charge, uh, Louis, who is 10 years old and the mother, Mrs. Eversham, uh, is very protective, if you like. So she doesn't want Louis going out of the house, really, especially not too far off the grounds. Uh, she doesn't want him going into the local village at all. Uh, the local villagers kind of look down on Hartwood Hall. They think there's some sort of mystery there. Um, uh, people die there and they're just kind of a bit a bit weary of it if you like and because Mrs Eversham and Louis don't go into the village that causes the mystery to deepen and the villagers to just be even more wary of them and then we get this instance once where Margaret takes young Louis to church on a Sunday and uh, this is while his mother's out at work and um, she works away from home quite a lot and she feels like because Louis says to her, oh you know I'd like to go to church I'm a, I'm a believer I believe in God I'm Christian and uh, so Margaret thinks there's no real harm in taking him to church because it's what she's done for all the other kids that she's been a governess to in the past um, and then we see the scene where they go to church he really enjoys it and then they come back and Mrs Eversham is waiting at the front door and she's not happy she's like what the hell are you doing um, 
she does relax a little bit um, after a, a while and she's like, okay, you can take him to church. I'm just concerned, you know, I don't want him injuring himself. We then find out that there was a daughter as well, Isabella, um, and we're led to believe that she is dead. Um, and this doesn't help with Margaret's sort of ghost fascination, if you like. She's, you know, seeing things and she thinks that she's probably seeing Isabella. Uh, we get an instance where, as I said earlier, Susan becomes ill, but also Louis becomes ill. They both get measles. And we have this instance where Louis, well, he says he, he saw his sister and he was talking to his sister. Um, that could be the delirium from the illness. Um, but also Margaret's thinking to herself, is he also seeing a ghost or a spirit or something strange that she was seeing? The mystery deepens when... Margaret finds Susan, one of the maids, has been rummaging through her room and she's stolen uh, a watch that she took from her husband when he died, but also a letter that she received. Now, the letter she received a few days before was from her sister-in-law and that gives us a bit more insight into Margaret's married life previously. Um, so the letter from her sister-in-law says, you know, we're sorry you weren't left with anything. We don't believe the rumours that their mother is saying about her. We get the feeling that maybe there's an accusation that Margaret has poisoned her husband. Um, anyway, she hides this letter away and Susan's rummaged for her room. She's found it and then she starts to blackmail her saying, you know, I want you to do this. I want you to do that. Um, which obviously distresses Margaret and you think because she's she comes across a fairly independent strong character but this seems to break her a little bit and she goes along with it even though she doesn't want to she seems to go along with it. We later find out Susan has also been sort of blackmailing other people in the house other staff members and yeah I can't say too much more about that without giving stuff away um, but yeah, we uncover some secrets going forward. Everyone seems to have a secret. Um, and I really enjoyed the twist with the secrets. You know, just when you think you know what's happening, you know, Margaret notices that Louis's hair is dyed and she's thinking, why is his hair dyed? Um, but the secret you think, well, what you believe the secret to be, it isn't. Um, so I really enjoyed that. And right until the last minute keeps you guessing. Um, but very reminiscent of Jane Eyre and Tennant and that's probably why I loved it and it's not the same at all you know it's a completely different story but if you love Jane Eyre if you love the Bronzes you're gonna love this no doubt. So in the end of Hartwood Hall we see the secrets all being revealed um, there's also a nice little love story between Margaret and the gardener um, and what I love about this it's kind of like a Victorian novel, but it's pushing the boundaries even further than what a Victorian novelist would have been able to. You know, we had the Brontes who were almost condemned for being too risque with the topics that they wrote about. Um, but Katie goes further with Hartwood Hall. Um, but in this day and age, you, you're allowed to, you can go further. And it's nice to see this progression because oh, I can't say too much about giving the story away, but you know, people like the characters in Hartwood Hall did exist in the Victorian era. They just weren't allowed to be written about, I guess, because of men basically looking down and being like, you can't write about that, you can't read that, you you know, all of that stuff. But what I love is that it redefines the Victorian woman um, in this book. You know, we get, so like Jane Eyre, for example, was quite risky at the time. We had this woman who was pushing boundaries who didn't succumb to what men wanted of her, who was independent and wanted to do her own thing and did her own thing. Um, she also had these sort of carnal wants and desires. However, Jane Eyre didn't necessarily go through with them as she wanted to. Yes, she ended up marrying Mr. Rochester, um, but you know, when she was feeling these sort of desires at the beginning, she wouldn't allow herself to go through with it. Here in Hartwood Hall, we have Margaret who kind of does allow her desires to take over, to allow herself to feel that enjoyment she wants. Um, but then we see this internal tumult with her afterwards saying, oh, she's not a good person. She's going to church and she's asking for forgiveness because she doesn't believe she's a good person, but she can't help give in to these desires. And it's really lovely to see this sort of female character of a Victorian era pushing back against sort of what's expected to them. And 
we take that further with the story of Mrs. Eversham, um, and I'm not saying more about that, read the story, but with her and her character development, especially near the end when we find out the secret, um, pushing boundaries once again, um, because these people did exist, they just weren't allowed to be written about, and so it's lovely to have a story set in an age that you love, but tackling themes that are important and that did exist that just weren't allowed to be talked about. So I thoroughly enjoyed this book as you can probably tell. Um, I'm not a big hardback book fan but I know Katie's second novel is coming out later this year in hardback and I'll probably have to get it because I don't think I'll be able to wait <laughs> until the paperback version comes out but honestly I cannot recommend this enough. Um, if you enjoy, as I said, stuff like Jane Eyre, Tenant of Wildfell Hall, um, and just a good Victorian novel. Um, and as I've, I think I just spoke previously about the 14th Letter and also the Silent Companions, 14th Letter didn't really encompass much sort of Victorian language. The Silent Companions stepped it up a little bit and met, made it feel a bit more Victorian, whereas this is just gloriously Victorian in its language, in its themes. In its presentation, I mean, you even get volumes, um, which is very much a nod reference to Victorian literature. Um, so if you do enjoy Jane Eyre and Tennant, then you're going to love this. I can't recommend it enough. I don't know what else to say because it is fantastically brilliant, creative. And yeah, I, I mean, the first day, I, to be fair, it was Sunday after I filmed the video for Silent Companions. Um, I started this and I read 150 pages within the first day. Um, and then the second day I think I read another 100 pages and I was at work that day as well um, and now we're Wednesday and I finished the book when I started on Sunday um, yeah so and I've literally finished the last 50 40, 40 pages this morning um, so I don't know what else to say I know it's going to be a short video but I don't want to give anything away because I want you to read it and I can't really say anything more than it's brilliant go buy it so next up I'm on my fourth of the four books I said I was going to read uh, this month my historical fiction month and that is The New Life by Tom Crew. Uh, this is on the long list for the Walter Scott Prize for Historical Fiction. Um, I'm on, on the 10th of April, I'm probably going to finish this maybe in the next week or so, so that gives me another couple of weeks. So I've already said I've got another book in mind and I may even get a sixth book in, um, which I probably know what's going to be as well. So um, that is my thoughts on Hartwood Hall. Thanks for watching. If you've read it, if you loved it, let me know below. If you've got any more recommendations on historical fiction, especially set in the Victorian era, please let me know. Um, I'm always on the lookout. I'm quite enjoying this sort of foray into historical fiction. Um, I'm not overly bothered about early 20th century. It's very much 19th century or earlier. Um, but it's been a nice little break from the Victorian literature. I'm looking forward to getting back next month. I've already picked out the two or three books I'm going to read next month. But yeah, I'm enjoying what I'm doing so far. So um, yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. Until next time. Bye.